Hi there, this is Andy the Alien, and this tutorial is on the advantages and disadvantages of different types of graphs. And during this tutorial, we'll talk about the advantages and disadvantages of pie graphs, or circle graphs, line graphs, bar graphs, and double bar graphs, and pictographs, or picture graphs. Now, I was reading the in the Vancouver Sun just last week about these UFO sightings. And I was thinking, uh-oh, this is, <clears throat> we're not being uh, so great at being secret anymore. And here's the article. It says, UFO sightings skyrocketing in Vancouver. There have been 977 sightings over the city in the past 20 years. And this is from uh, the Vancouver Sun on August 11th, 2009. And I'll just read you a little bit of what it said, what the article says. I'll put a link to it. Uh, on, on underneath this tutorial that you can read it yourself. It says, Canadians saw a record number of unidentified flying objects last year, according to a 20-year study of saucer sightings from coast to coast. Chris Redkowski, a UFOologist and science writer in Manitoba, said Tuesday that in the past two decades, 15,000 Canadians have reported seeing 8,600 UFOs. These include sightings of lights in the sky and disc-shaped objects reported to authorities ranging from the Department of National, National Defense to airports, police, and the RCMP. He said the number of sightings has skyrocketed since 1989, when 141 were reported last year. Last year, there were 1,004. And uh, included in the article are uh, metropolitan sightings for uh, five different major cities over the last 20 years. And they include Vancouver with 977 sightings over the last 20 years, Toronto with 614 sightings, Winnipeg with 338 sightings, Ottawa with 276 sightings, and Montreal with 223 sightings. And I thought, hmm, that's a very interesting article. And I thought, well, because I live, well, I don't live in Vancouver, but I live in the same province as Vancouver, I thought, how does that compare to the rest, those other cities uh, where those UFO sightings were, were reported? So I made myself up a little table that you can see here. And I thought, well, you know, the best graph to kind of look at, to, to look at these different sightings would probably be a circle graph or a pie graph, because I wanted to see how Vancouver compared with the, those other metropolitan cities, those major cities. And the reason I thought that would be a good idea is because I know that a pie graph can show how things compare to a whole. Or when we usually talk about a whole, we talk about percentages, right? Like if you get 30%, that means you got roughly a third of the test right, if you got 30%. If you got, uh, you know, if you got 90%, you go, wow, I almost got the whole test right. You're thinking about the whole, right? So I wanted to see, well, Vancouver, 977 sites, well, how does that compare to the whole? So I can figure that out as a percentage. Also, in a circle, you, all, you already know that a circle has 360 degrees. So how might 977 sightings in Vancouver compare to the 360 degrees in a circle? So here's how I set out to do that. If you first add up all the sightings, because remember a pie graph or a circle graph that demonstrates a whole the best. We have to figure out, well, what is the whole? So you have to add up all of the number of sightings, which I did here. And I ended up with a total number of sightings in these five metropolitan cities of 2,428. They also call that the total frequency. That's what that's called. Then, if I take the number of sightings for each of these cities, uh, in this case I took Winnipeg, which is 338, divide that by 2,428, multiply that by 100, because it is by 100, because it's 100%, I ended up with a percentage of 13.92%. If I round that, I get 14%. If I did the same thing with Vancouver, I end up with 977 divided by 2,428, multiply that by 100, and I get 40.24%, rounded to 40%. So right away, it all of a sudden starts making a little more sense to me, right? Because Winnipeg, if it's only 14%, isn't nearly as big as Vancouver at 40%. I mean, 40%, percent is almost half the number of sightings. But still, it'd be nice to visualize that in a pie graph or a circle. So here's what it looks like in a circle. If I took 40% of that circle and compare that to, let's say, Winnipeg, it's only 14%. And I did the same thing with those other three cities. You can see right away that, wow, you know, the Vancouver sightings are a big chunk of that whole pie. You know, there's Toronto, it's 25%, so not quite as big. 
if I added up all those percentages, again, I rounded them, you'll see that I actually end up with 99%. I don't actually end up with 100%. It's because of all these little bits, right? The little decimal 1.8s and the decimal 9.2s. If I didn't include those. So, as a percentage, we end up with 99%. But it still gives us a good idea of how it compares to the whole. Now, if I wanted to build the, a pie chart, I also, uh, instead of doing it as percentages, I needed to compare it to how many degrees there are in a circle. A circle has 360 degrees. So figuring it out based on percentages is essentially the same, the same thing. It's the same way, except instead of multiplying it by 100, I'm going to multiply it by 360. So at first, I added up all of the sightings, which you can see here, I ended up with 2,428. And then my sector angle, how many degrees each of these little angles, like these little colors are going to be, are the number of sightings divided by the total number of sightings times 360 instead of 100. So I took Toronto's as an example. So I took Toronto's total number of sightings was 614. I divided it by 2,428, which is the total number of sightings, and I multiplied that by 360 to get the total number of degrees. Now, if you look at this chart here, you can see that just by looking at the graphs that the graph that I made based on percentages that it looks like it's almost a 90 degree angle right and in fact it might even be a 90 degree angle and when I calculated it out with my handy dandy calculator in fact it ends up being 91 degrees so yeah that's pretty close so 91 degrees in that circle is the Toronto section of the pie and <clears throat> so once I calculated all the different sightings you can see that you know, there's Vancouver with 145 degrees and Toronto with its 91 degrees. If I add up all those angles, I end up with 360 degrees. And one key thing is I didn't round until the very end. I could have done the same thing with percentages and I would have ended up with 100% as well. So that's how I made a pie graph. You can see, wow, Vancouver had a lot of sightings compared to the other city so if you live in Vancouver look up into the sky you might see me flying around then again my spaceship isn't working so you won't see me flying around there just yet but you might see some of my friends all right let's talk about line graphs this is a line graph that I made that shows how quickly my spaceship flies it's kind of like a dragster except in the beginning I don't accelerate that quickly so this graph shows uh, time in seconds along the x-axis or along the bottom you can see I started with zero and I went all the way up to 10 seconds and then along the vertical axis or the y-axis how far I am from my starting point so again zero you know I'm, I'm not going anywhere I haven't gone anywhere until no time has gone by but after one second I've gone 30 kilometers in two seconds I've gone 50 kilometers in three seconds I've gone 75 kilometers. so I haven't gone very far it's only after about five seconds that I really start to accelerate. It has something to do with my special warp drives. After 10 seconds, I'm going, I've gone 500 kilometers. So I'm going very fast. A line graph is best for showing changes in data over time. And you can see that I start out slow and I go really quick. That's what a line graph is really good at. Line graphs are also good for interpolating data as well, or finding a middle point. For example, if you wanted to know how fast I was going at about six and a half seconds, I, I've already, I'd already gone 200 kilometers in six seconds, and I'd gone 260 kilometers in seven seconds, it's easy to interpolate that in six and a half seconds, I had probably gone 230 kilometers. Another type of line graph that you might be familiar with is a cardiograph that shows what your heart is doing, how your heart is beating over time. So you can see this graph. Uh, shows that. That's not a type of line graph. 